Hey, what's going on agents and advisors? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find your ideal clients on LinkedIn and on LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So with everything that we do here at Trained Advisor, we focus on helping retirement planners land more high value clients without spending any money on paid ads, which is why we absolutely love LinkedIn. It's a great place to connect with the right person, be able to build a relationship, and eventually be able to transform that connection into a paying client. So before I dive into LinkedIn and LinkedIn Sales Navigator, I wanna talk about why you need to continue continuously be sending out connection requests. Now, way back in the day, LinkedIn was kind of like the wild, wild west of marketing where they didn't really monitor how many connection requests you were sending out. There were some limits in terms of how many you could send out, but you could send out hundreds, if not thousands a day without running into any issues. But what LinkedIn noticed was all of their members were starting to get spammed, which was happening a ton on LinkedIn, which is where a lot of negative views and perspectives of LinkedIn come into play is because of that environment. So what LinkedIn did was they came in and they set a hard cap on how many connection requests you could send out in a week. And it was a hard cap of 100. Yes, there were some ways that you could get around that by sending out a connection request via email if you had their email address, but more or less, you were stuck right at 100, where if you sent 100 and you tried to send 101, you would get an error message popping up on your screen saying that you were out of connection requests for the week. So. Going into about six to eight months ago, what LinkedIn did was they slowly started lifting the cap on how many connection requests you could send out. In that environment where there was a hard cap of 100, that was a widely publicized number where you couldn't really get above it. But with this new, with the new set of rules that we're playing with, there is still a limit of how many you can send out each week, but that number is going to be more algorithmically based depending on how many connection requests you're sending out, how many connection requests are getting accepted. Are you actually having conversations with these folks? Are you messaging them? Are they messaging you back? Are you posting? Are you actually active on LinkedIn? And with that, LinkedIn will let you send more connection requests. Now, the reason why I highly recommend you send these out on a daily basis is that these connection requests are use it or lose it. They don't transfer from week to week. So let's use round numbers. Right now, on average, we're sending about for each of our agents and advisors, we're sending out about 180 to 190 connection requests every single week. Now, let's let's round it up. Let's say it's 200. Those 200 connection requests will not transfer to the next week if you don't use them. So let's say that you're going hard, you're sending out connection requests, you send out 200, you decide to take a break for a week and not send any, then the next week you don't have 400 banked up that you can use, you're back at, at starting at zero where you have a limit of 200. So I would recommend, highly recommend sending these out on a daily basis because even if you don't know what your strategy is gonna look like moving forward in order to transform these connections into paying clients, you want to grow your first degree network as big as possible. So for my account personally, I'm somewhere around 18 and a half thousand to 19,000 first degree connections. Now what I love about that is that these are connections where these are real people. Either I sent them a connection request or they sent me a connection request. A real person had to click accept, right? So I know that I've got 18 to 19,000 real people in my first degree network where if I go out and I have an offer that I want to push out to my first degree network, now I've got that built-in customer base or built-in prospect list that I can go and present that offer to. So make sure you're sending those out as frequently as possible. Grow that first degree network Please, when we start working with an advisor and they have a thousand first degree connections or more, I know that by implementing our messaging and funnel strategy, we're gonna be able to hit the ground running. We have a lot of low hanging fruit in that first degree network that we're gonna be generating leads, we're gonna be generating appointments, we're gonna be generating clients. So get those out as much as possible. So diving in how to do this on regular LinkedIn. So let's say that I am a financial advisor, I'm a life insurance agent, and I wanna work with doctors. So inside of the top left, I'm gonna go ahead inside of the search box here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna type in the keyword doctor. Now you'll notice that it pops up people, pops up jobs, products. So over in the top left, I'm gonna click on people because I wanna go ahead and search out real people. Now with this, I'm generating 2.1 million results, which is awesome, right? But I don't just wanna work with any doctor. I wanna go out and uh, number one, I wanna make sure that I am targeting my second degree connections. Now, first degree connections are people that you, you, you are connected with, right? Either you sent them a connection request or they sent you a connection request, somebody clicked accept, you guys are now connected on LinkedIn. Second degree connections are people that you have connections in common with. Third degree, no connections in common, right? So with the second degree, 
if you are sending a connection request to somebody in your second degree network, the chances of them accepting that connection request are higher than going out to a third degree connection on LinkedIn. So I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna hit second, I'm gonna hit show results. Right now about 4,800 people, which, which isn't bad, right? That's a decent number to start with. But let's say that I wanna target somebody that's geographically in my area. Now, for our agents and advisors, this is something that we wanna do with every single one of them. And the reason for that is, Let's say, you know, most of our advisors and agents work virtually, or at least they start the process virtually. But let's say somebody wants to look you in the eye and shake your hand before moving over five, six, seven, eight figures of their hard earned money to you. I want to make sure that that's something that's going to be easy for you, easy for the prospect. You're not hopping on a plane from California to New York just to have that meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and target in my local area. Now you can target by state, you can target by city. So I'm just going to type in where I'm at, Gilbert, Arizona, click on that and we'll see what it comes up with. All right, so we've got about 115 results in Gilbert, Arizona that are my second degree connections. Now, from here, when you go out and start sending connection requests, you're gonna go over here on the right-hand side and hit connect. Now, from here, I want to add a note or I wanna add a message inside of my connection request to add a personal or a human element into the equation. Now, with this, don't overthink this. I see a lot of agents and advisors who overthink this step in the process where they're like, man, I've gotta go see what school he went to, I gotta see what industry he's in, I gotta see how long he's been a doctor, I gotta see how long, and they include all that in this giant paragraph of a connection request message where all of that doesn't really matter. All you're looking to do is essentially get this person to, to digitally shake your hand, right? That's, what, that's how I like viewing connection requests where it's a digital handshake between you and a prospect and you're just trying to get them to shake your hand so believe it or not our highest connection request message that is working the best is just saying you know hey first name hi first name can we connect then put your name at the end that's been working the best for everybody the reason why i don't like a lot of long paragraphs inside of this message is i don't want to give my prospect a reason to say no and if i if i'm trying if i'm sending out a novel it's it just gives them more reasons to say no so keep it nice and simple conversational get them to shake your hand now i'm not going to hit send because i want to connect with life insurance agents and financial professionals but for you go ahead and hit send right so Going back inside of this, remember 115 results, okay? That's gonna be an important number. With regular LinkedIn, they don't show you everybody that you're, that you're looking for. They're not gonna show you all the people. They're not gonna show you all of the accounts. Sales Navigator does a couple of things. Number one, it gives you a lot deeper criteria to be able to search out your target audience. Number two is it's gonna show you everybody, right? You're paying to use the platform, so they're gonna give you a lot more tools. They're gonna give you a lot more visibility into who's on the platform. Now, the other thing that's important is that if you have Sales Navigator, LinkedIn is kinda of like a pay-to-play platform where if you're using regular LinkedIn versus Sales Navigator, LinkedIn is gonna give you a certain limit of connection requests you can send out each week. Sales Navigator is going to increase that amount. They're gonna give you more connection requests, more messages, more actions that you can take on the platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit lead filters. Now inside of the keywords here, again, I'm just gonna search the, the keyword of doctor. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull up everybody on LinkedIn who has doctor inside of their profile somewhere, right? So you'll notice we got some third degree connections. That's what this little, uh, number is right here. We've got some second degree connections, but with this, I've got 9 million results and I can't remember the number we pulled up before. I think it was like 4.1 million, right? Maybe 2.1. You, you can go back in the video and look at that. But right now I'm already showing 9 million results just with the keyword of doctor. Now, again, we don't want to target every single doctor. We don't want to be targeting doctors in India, in Pakistan, in the United States, in Europe, right? We want to make sure that we're targeting doctors in our local area. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is down over here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna go to where it says geography. Now, a couple of things on geography. Number one is I can search by, again, you can country, city, state, you name it, right? So just to show you apples to apples comparison with regular LinkedIn, I'm gonna type in Gilbert, Arizona. I'm gonna hit include. And right now, this is pulling up about 2,000 results inside of Arizona, okay? If you want to get a little bit more granular with this, one of the things that I like to do is instead of searching by a city, I like to search within a certain radius so that I can be pulling in multiple cities. So for me, you know, I can drive 20 miles, I can drive 15 miles or whatever for an important meeting, I can block out that time, 
It's not inconvenient. It's something that I can do, the prospect can do, whatever it might be. So inside of geography, when I hit that plus button, down here below, instead of region, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit postal code. So within, so with that, I can search within a given radius. So let's say my limit's gonna be 25 miles, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type my zip code, 85297. All right, 85297. Let's see what that pulls up. So right now I've got 29,000 results that are pulling up that have doctor in the keyword within 25 miles of 85297. Now again, this is this seems like a really good number, but we want to start we want to make sure that we have a good targeted list of exactly who we want to be working with. So remember before I mentioned that we want to be targeting second degree connections. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit best path. I'm going to hit second degree connections and let's see what this comes up with. All right, so right now I've got three and a half thousand individuals profiles where somebody has doctor inside of their um, inside of their profile. So one of the things that you'll see is that the keyword doctor is not necessarily going to pull in a medical professional. You've got doctors like you're seeing this right here, Professor Emeritus, Emeritus with the University of New Mexico. Now, this could be your ideal audience. This could not be your ideal audience. But let's say that I want to work with somebody specifically inside of the medical industry. So I'm going to go back down. And we have this little function right here, the search criteria of industry. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start typing in medical. Okay. Now I'm going to copy and paste the initial. So I can do medical practices. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in, um, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's say alternative medicine. And let's say we want to do hospitals, right? So let's go, let's see if hospital is one of them. Hospitals and healthcare. There we go. So now what this is going to do is target, it's going to pull in the profiles of somebody that has doctor inside of their profile and they are, they have tagged their profile as being in one of these three industries. So instead of having, I can't remember how many thousands of profiles before, now we've got a much more manageable number of about 818, right? So you'll notice that naturopathic doctor, doctor of chiropractic, naturopathic doctor, co-founder, naturopathic pathic medical doctor. We've got business development manager, and that's one I'd have to look into that and see. Um, I see med tech, innovator. So it's gonna still pull in individuals that are in these industries that have the keyword of doctor, but there may be a little bit of, you know, so, sometimes you get kind of like a an odd duck coming in where it's like, that guy's not necessarily a doctor, but somehow in his profile, he tagged himself in a way that's gonna pull up in these industries with that keyword, okay? Now, as you go out, Again, just that I can't reiterate this enough. You want to be sending out these connection requests on a daily basis. So what you're going to do, same sort of thing. See these three little dots right here? You're going to go ahead and click on the three little dots, hit connect. You can send the invitation. Boom. You're off to the races from there. Now, with this, I would highly recommend utilizing LinkedIn automation for this particular um, aspect of the marketing. Okay. LinkedIn automation is going to do a lot to leverage technology for time. So yes, you can sit in front of your computer and it really wouldn't take that long, right? It's a, almost a copy and paste message that is gonna take you, I mean, you can knock these out pretty quickly. But what I love about the automation is that regardless of what you're doing, whether you are working on cases, whether you are meeting with a client, whether you're on the beach with your family, this is going to go out on a daily basis. This is something that's gonna be running, uh, running in the background 24 seven, regardless of what else you have on your plate. So instead of doing that manual action where you might get busy, you might get distracted, utilize that technology. Now, from there, once somebody's connected with you, you cannot just go out and just blast a sales message to everybody. And this is something that I'll cover in a, in a separate training. You want to make sure that once somebody's connected with you, you're not just spraying and praying, hey, here's what I do, here's what I can help you, blah, blah, blah. Let's hop on a 15 minute call. If somebody is a busy business owner or a successful professional, they're not going to have time in their day to just hop on a 15 minute virtual meet and greet with somebody if they don't know the purpose of that meeting. So instead of uh, doing what 99% of the LinkedIn marketing gurus out there are telling you to do, instead of just blasting that message and hoping you stumble across somebody that's desperate enough to meet with you, what I like to do instead is position value, position some sort of value-based offer so that you can earn their attention, you can earn their time, you can get them off of LinkedIn and into your, your funnels, your marketing 
funnels, your sales funnels, your nurturing sequences so that you can get that person taking the action that you know that they need to take, which eventually leads to them booking appointments and meetings on your calendar, and then you're off to the races from there. So let me know if this makes sense. Let me know if this helps. Let me know what questions you guys have, and I'll talk to you soon.